when did you like decide, okay, basketball maybe is not going to be my long term? You know, I and poker was going to be able to support yourself. When did you feel that was the case? When did you make that transition? Basketball was my, you know, my my childhood dream. So it was it was kind of a hard step to take that to take that uh, make that decision. So I, I I got injured for six nine months. So that put me put me a little bit on the sidelines. And I actually first when I I quit basketball before I got into poker full time. I was already winning at sitting goals. I was doing pretty well at full tilt. Uh, that was how I started. I would play in between practices. We had two a day. So I would, I would grind a little bit. Uh, weekends, when after the game, I was also playing a little bit, making a little bit of money on the side. But first, I quit basketball to, to finish college. Uh, ba- basketball was not going that well. I started really young at the pro team. At 15, I was like a little prodigy for my island, for the country as well. And then at 21, I was still not getting you know solid minutes. I was still the backup point guard, getting gar- garbage minutes. So that was kind of getting frustrated a little bit. And I just looked at, at my future. And- I said, well, actually, I have to finish college because college was it's hard to be a student athlete here because the you're inserting the pro team means you can't miss practice for school. So the the our practice not so you have to actually just miss classes a bunch. So I was just not making not doing very well in, in college. So I just decided, well, I'm just going to try to finish this degree. And poker is making enough money for me to, you know, I don't have to depend on anybody else. So I just, I'll just go and go figure. Of course, I didn't finish college. I just, just went full grind and just. But yeah, the, the first step when I finished when I quit basketball was to, to study, which I never did. I just got into the MTTs and just, you know, things went well. When you play online, let's just take over this past few months. You win player of the series during W Coop. You're playing World Poker Tour stuff. And party poker, I know I saw you on GG, you are, you're battling for WSOP stuff. So you're playing on multiple sites. How do you prepare for an online Sunday? And how many tables will you play at one time? Now, way less than before. I try to stick around six. Uh, just too many days in a row, just too high stakes. Actually, it's really, really high stakes. Average by is super high. So I try to keep it a little, a little under there. I'll go with eight if I have to, sometimes on high volume, but key is just preparation, just just leaving no turns and uh, unturned, no stones unturned. Just just getting ready for just picking before you start to play, what schedule you're gonna play, what tournaments are you gonna play, using late reg, you know, to try to get a little bit of everything, just to, to don't miss a bunch of a bunch of tournaments. Um, and just just be ready. Whenever I come to play, it's like I'm I'm I still try to do everything as with the same level of intensity with the same level of discipline and preparations as I would do in basketball and pro basketball. So I would just get ready for the game, you know, get your meal ready, just get your sleep, uh, just, you know, game plan a little bit, see what's going on today. Just every uh, preparation is key. Just don't get surprised. Don't try not to over table, try not to under table, try to be with energy at the right time. Just, I even, I, mean, I try to prepare everything. I even face whenever I drink coffee, that's even planned. So I just don't hit, you know, those high peaks of, of caffeine or, or their lows too. So I, I try to prepare everything you can imagine and, and a little bit more. You know, you, already, you're, you mentioned you want to win five WSOP bracelets. You did win one last summer. I want to understand where does that number five, where did you come up with that, that you want to, uh, that you want to win five bracelets from? It's kind of a random number, not exactly. A, I mean, I would like to win multiple. A lot of people wins one. A lot of people have one bracelet. You know, not a lot of multiple winners. So that's that's an accolade I would like to 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 achieve. And one other thing is that I always like the the mixed games. Uh, there's a there's a quote by Barry Greenson a few years ago. Uh, I don't, I'm probably misquoting, but he said that if you can't just can't consider yourself a poker player if you don't play one game, uh, meaning hold them. So I always fell in love with all of them. Uh, that's one of the things I'm really passionate about the game. It's been ten years. I honestly I just finished the sixth heavily intense grinding months and I just feel more motivated than ever. So that's winning five races would also, uh, it's not just about the five races, it would mean that I'm, I'm competent in, in a whole uh, range of games, you know, all different games, the stud games, the Omaha games, the draw games, all that. That's, that's, that's basically where it came from. And I think it's still, I try to keep it as basic as possible. I still try to live 
my career, my poker career, as I was just starting, I was just a wreck. And when you're recreational, what do you do? You follow World Series, you know, you get to the World Poker Tour, uh, yeah. rest in peace, uh, Mike Sexton, we all love you. I, I gotta throw that in there as soon as I mentioned the World Poker Tour. So you yeah. you grow up with that fantasy of just winning multiple things. And I came from basketball, so you win multiple ranks, multiple championships, multiple, you know, scoring titles. And even though that's just, you know, uh, it's not really something palpable. It's something that keeps me going, you know. I know it's it's not about it. I know it's not about the, the, the coupe titles or about the player of the series titles, but that, that, that gets me motivation just to keep going for another year, another couple of years. I think that, that'd be cool. It keeps the fire burning. And I think people, yeah. as soon as they get to a certain level, it's all just numbers and EVs and money. And just, yeah, don't forget, have fun. You know, don't forget to have fun. Poker is fun. I mean, yeah. And I think the bracelets and the titles and the accolades and all this, the things that I go after, it keeps poker fun for me. It's like I'm still, it's like JC said, just, just treat your every day like it's your first day in the job. So I try to keep it simple that way. And the bracelets personifies that a little bit. Um, tell me a little bit about what this meant for you and and winning this tournament. Because this is a, yeah, this is a, this is a big one. So did you feel nervous? You know, because it's so second, I've gotten second World Series. It's hard to win. It's hard to actually win, to Get finish it up, to run good. There's luck, there's all the above. What did that mean for you, and, and how did you how did you pull it off at the end? Well, give me a little bit of your final table uh, and, and sort of that tournament in general. What was different and special for you there? It's really hard to win. I always like to throw that stat in there. Uh, Shadwick was consensus the best player in the world, considered by all the the peers who had to vote. I was one of them, and I did vote on him. And the card players make uh, ranking, whatever it's called. Shadwick got him. He won his first bracelet after fourteen final tables. So even if the final table the hell out of it, it's still hard. It's hard to get a win. Just, there's yeah. second that don't count to win those. So it's it, it it is definitely really hard. And I was uh, I never ran really good at, at this series at all. So I I was always grinding really hard and things really never happened there. So it's kind of like a a bit of a relief. I had once so many things online. Well, uh, pardon my 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 flexing but i had a, one a bunch of things online and live i was still kind of just not getting my feet wet on the on the really cool stuff so that was one of the it felt more like a burden out of my back than to something like really cool that i should have celebrated which is you know i kind of regret that regret that a little bit should have just had a just take it a moment a little bit but it was more like a i'm a man in the mission i have to get this one get this one behind my back that kind of just puts me in a certain uh you know, a certain uh, Padamar, I don't even say that word, a certain uh, level that I felt that I was in. And it's kind yeah. of just like, a, it was more like a underdog, underdog uh, achievement, like a mark, I have to get this one. Then right. something that I celebrated, yeah, was euphor uh, euphoric about it or something like that. What tournament for you, looking back over this, your, your career, has been was like one that really like was a breakout for you or maybe helped you get the sponsorship deal helped you get confidence helped you move up stakes what what stands out for you over over uh, your career? I might be one of the few i don't know if that's good or bad i don't have that moment when that that big first big score the first like either life changing or stakes changing or you know uh i was I, when that tournament happened i was already playing high stakes and yeah, it was a great score, but I was I didn't change any kind of. I played a little more high stake. I play. I, I get my wet into some super high rollers a little bit more, but I was already playing it before the the the, the breaks. And so it's right. It, I, I it, was, it was for me it was a bit different. It was a bit frustrating for first years, but I was winning all these big tournaments online and constantly getting really good results. But then whenever it was like either scoop or the big events, I was just had a lot of I had a bunch of almost way too many. I ran right. big quarterly on those for, for, for a long time. So even though that didn't really help me in terms of bankroll, I'd see a bunch of guys who I always I came up with, like either Adrian or Mustafa, and they're, they're my teammates, or Sergio I do a bunch of guys that I've known for a long, long time. They were just blossoming and just jumping to these high rollers, and I was just kind of getting stuck into waiting for that big score. And that was a, a big burden on my back I felt I, I felt I had. So that change a little bit with the, with the series, but also made me who, who I am as a player. So I never had it easy. I probably ran a little bit bad at, at, at some spots when I, when I was getting close to those big wins, but I got really lucky that I ran bad there. It, it just made me overwork and just turned that into fire and just, well, if I have to win four flips, 
next time I'm going to study, get so good, maybe I'll have to win three flips. And maybe yeah. the next tournament, maybe I'm going to have to win two flips. And, you, know, you know what I'm saying? So I just try to, I just I got all that motivation into the, into the shakiness. As, uh, I'm just going to get as good as I can possibly be. So eventually this is going to be uh, undeniable. How do you deal with the mental game? So kind of, you know, just queue up, uh, do you work with the coach? Do you do meditation? Yeah. Give me some some stuff on your mental game. Yeah, I work with Jared Tindler right from the start. I'm, I might be his oldest client to date. I started really, really, I invested 3K in the 10 sessions on, with him. I might have 8K, all my money was 8K. That was really, yeah, as, as soon as I got into 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 professional poker, you know, you start dealing with the tilt. It's like, I'm, this cannot be the way. So if I'm going to do this, this part of the game has to go away. And I've been working ever since with him on and off is he's, he's also a friend. So he's, he's a guy that I, I go back on and off, you know, uh, every year we have a bunch of sessions that really helps me to keep my game in sharp in, in, a, in place and sharp as well. Uh, yeah, that's it. But mostly just how you're built as well. Yeah. You, you put yourself in tough situations, pretty situations. I, I love, you know, just physical hard work. I used to do the, the basketball. I, Basketball harder strain is where where I shine the most. The long time, the long distance running, and the, the all these greedy things that you put yourself through, and all the lessons, the hard lessons that I've learned while growing up, all the hard times that me and my family have gone through, that just shaped me. And and I'm I'm telling you, we're just different here. We're built different, a little bit hard. It's, it's Mamba mentality right here. I'm wrapping Kobe's shirt, and and this is like you want body. Just just take a no victim and you know. No bullshit, no excuses, no victim mentality. Just go with it. Okay, it went bad. What can you do about it? Nothing. Just shut the fuck up. Well, sorry about cursing. Just just go with your business. Just do your thing and just move on. I think people just, just complain a little too much. We're a bunch of whiners, myself included at times. But I think just, uh, just that that's how it is. Things will not go your way in life. How you deal with things is what makes you not not the circumstances that you – if you're given a golden – a golden uh, crib and you know, everything was perfect. You got to a certain level, but the guy got to a certain a level just below you. You had the hardest circumstance. Uh, big guy, the, the latter, you know, he achieved a little bit more. So just whatever you achieve, whatever circumstances you're given, just do the best with them and see how, how far you can get. 